During any weather disaster, be it tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, lives and property are saved because of weather forecasts. Warnings give people time to prepare and even evacuate. And that can't happen without weather balloons from the National Weather Service. Here's how they work. A meteorologist first fills the latex balloon with either helium or hydrogen. Next, a radio sonde is attached. It's an instrument cluster that measures things like temperature, humidity, and wind direction, and it sends that data back to the meteorologists. The balloon is launched and quickly rises at about 1,000 feet per minute, collecting data along the way. In the first few thousand feet, the balloon detects wind speed and direction, data helpful for predicting storms. The weather balloon then measures when the air temperature drops below freezing, which is key for predicting icy precipitation like sleet or hail. At 30,000 feet, the balloon enters the cruising altitude of most commercial airlines. Pilots rely on the detailed wind and temperature data to plan safe and efficient flight paths. More than 100,000 feet up, air pressure drops low enough for the balloon to stretch to the size of a school bus. Soon, the balloon pops and the parachute carries the radio sonde back to the ground. Under normal circumstances, the National Weather Service launches about 180 of these each day across the country. But with DOGE efforts to shrink the federal government, some Weather Service offices are now launching balloons less frequently due to layoffs and buyouts. Less data means less information about what's happening in the atmosphere to feed weather models, which do everything from predict storms to project climate change. Will less data from the atmosphere affect the National Weather Service's ability to issue accurate forecasts and warnings in an emergency? Meteorologists don't want to find out.